wonderful people. Man, y'all look great out there today. I love you guys so much. I'm so glad to have you back for another video today. We are blessed to be able to explore Psalm 104, bringing us closer and closer to wrapping up our time here in Book 4 of Psalms. And 104 is also part of that um, ending run of four psalms that, that call for praise and the glorification of God, all fueled by our gratitude for everything that he has done. This is the second in that series. Um, let's pray. We'll read it. I think I've got some pretty cool stuff to share with y'all today. And, of course, if you watch this video, if you like this video, if it speaks to you, if you're okay with it, I would love, 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 love if you could share it on any social media platforms possible. If you could send the link in Messenger to someone, anything like that that you can help to get this video, this message out there to be able to just let people know that, that God is so good and there is nothing He is not capable of my life and the fact that I am sitting here today able to share this with you, the fact that I am even alive is proof of that. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for waking me up today, Lord. Thank you for this life that I get to call mine now. Lord, I, I thank you for the chance to grow with you, Lord, the chance to be better moment to moment, Lord, because I am not my own. Thank you for raising me to new life in Christ Jesus. I, I thank you for the powerful indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We want to lift you up, Lord, lift you up in a world that is shifting and flimsy and selfish and carnal and wicked and foolish. You are none of those things, Lord. You are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Not only are you our creator, Lord, but by you we are sustained. By you we are nourished physically, spiritually, mentally, Lord. And I just want to thank you for that. I want to ask that this video be able to nourish your flock, Lord, that it be able to provide sustenance to my brothers and sisters in Christ, and that it also be able to catch the eye, the ear, the attention in any way possible of anyone out there, Lord, living like I lived for so long in, in foolish service to the devil, in foolish service to the flesh and the appetites that that can overwhelm us when we when we try to go it on our own, Lord. I want to take just a minute and just... Sometimes it feels like we have things inside of us that we don't know how to put into words. But it's okay because... God can find that thought within us. He can find that need within us. Let's just lift your hands up to God and just open your heart and invite Him in to, to read the contents of your being for a minute. We would pray for a hedge of protection around the lives and a blood covering over the hearts and over the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Lord. Help us to be strong enough to pick up our cross and to follow you. Help us to be strong enough to, to cast aside the things of this world, to shake the dirt of this world off of our feet, and to put our focus, our care, our attention, our all into you, God. Guide us, lead us, and direct us today. And we pray all of this in the powerful, righteous, lovely, and merciful name of your Son and our Savior, 
Lord Jesus Christ, blessed be his name. Amen. Amen, y'all. All right. I don't know about you, if you ever get that way, but sometimes it just feels like you're like, I don't know, like you want to say something to God, or you want to express something, but it just doesn't seem to want to come out. You don't even seem to be able to wrap it up yourself into words. And so that's a perfect chance to just lay yourself bare and to just be quiet before God and just to invite Him in and let Him just search you inside and out. Because Lord knows the reason. There, there is nothing that is beyond Him. Amen? All right. Psalm 104. Praise to the Sovereign Lord for His creation and providence. Amen? And you're going to notice the similarities between this one and 103. Verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind, who makes his angels, spirits, his ministers, a flame of fire. You who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They went up over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place which you founded for them. You have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they may not return to cover the earth. He sends the springs into the valleys. They flow among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. By them, the birds of the heavens have their home. They sing among the branches. He waters the hills from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine in bread, which strengthens man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he planted. Where the birds make their nest, the stork has her home in the fir trees. The high hills are for the wild goats, the cliffs are a refuge for the rock badgers. He appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knows it's going down. You make darkness, and it is night, in which all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their food from God. When the sun rises, they gather together and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. This great and wide sea in which are innumerable teeming things, living things, both small and great. There the ships sail about. There is that Leviathan which you have made to play there. These all wait for you that you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand, they are filled with good. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the hills and they smoke. 
I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. May my meditation be sweet to Him. I will be glad in the Lord. May sinners be consumed from the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. Another, another powerful song. And again, you see how we end and start with the same, that same line. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. This, this beautiful inclusion from our psalmist that, that bookends not only 104, but as you see, it bookends the whole series going back to 103 with these with these bookends of bless the Lord, oh my soul, this sort of talk with oneself, like, you know, um, you're going to get up, you're going to praise God. It's like a pep talk to oneself, amen? All right, so let's jump back here, see what I have to share with you guys today. Again, Thank you so much for letting me. I, I really enjoy this so much, and I pray that it nourishes you as well. All right. Hello, you lovely souls, and anyone out there who is lost, imprisoned, and in dire need of a Savior, one who is eternal, sovereign, and omniscient, not just a Savior in this moment. I'm not talking about being saved by the bell, Zach Morris. We're talking about a Savior for all time. Now, to anyone new, welcome. Please drop a comment and tell me about yourself. Tell all of us about yourself. Me, I'm Rex, and Jesus raised me to new life a few years back after I had given away decades of my life to the devil by way of sin, addiction, lawlessness, pride, and promiscuity. But now I am a grateful child of God in this show. I pray that this show issues forth from that. I want that gratitude, that thanksgiving to be the, the spring that feeds into this show. So, what you just heard, what we just read, the work that we just read was Psalm 104. So, please get your shoes on and join me, friends, as we are blessed to again go walking in the Word. Now, you know one thing I'm always enthralled by and that I never really um, grow cold or numb to is just how over more than a millennia and in multiple languages and by way of a few dozen authors, the Word of God came into being and the Word of God is non-contradictory and in fact upon being rightly divided and upon deep dives the word of God only further vets itself and reinforces itself and, and outside of the Bible in the real world in, in, in archaeological findings and countless other things we see how the word of God continues to be vetted by these things now 104 follows the outline and the thought progression set into place by the powerful Genesis 1 creation account. So, in 104, we have a creation song, or a creation hymn. And in fact, we have one of unrivaled beauty, I would argue. Now, 104 opens on soulful, enthusiastic praise for the divine majesty of God the Father, our all-knowing, all-powerful creator. Now, that section is verse 1 through verse 2a, so the first line of verse 2. And then we have two strophes. The first strophe consists of verse 2b through verse 9, and in it we find um, a call for praise in light of the creation and the sustaining of all that there is by God Almighty. Now, strophe number 2 the meaty one is verses 10 through verse 30. And in that 20 verse section, we find the focus is on God's plentiful provisions for the created. And then we come to a close on 
the section of verse 31 to verse 35. And in that area, we see how it showcases not only praise, but prayer as well, in light of the powerful and plentiful glory of God. Amen. There is no end to God's glory. There is nothing that could contain it or diminish it. Amen. Let's look at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. All right, so here our psalmist fleshes out the metaphor of the creation pictured as God's garments. Now, I want to touch on something. Just as the clothing we wear is ours, this is my clothing, but it's not me. Those are your jeans, your dress, your shirt. But that dream, that dress, those jeans, those shorts, they're not you. They're yours, but they're not you, right? Well, the same distinction exists. I'm sorry, I had to use this word because I don't get to do it often. The same distinction exists betwixt the creator and the creation. I can't help it. I love a word like that. Um, this is meant to be a guiding illustration and to specifically disparage any and all idolizing or worship of any aspect of the creation, regardless of its splendor, regardless of its glory. You know? Um, if, if you were my wife and I'd say, you know, wife, I'm in love with you. It doesn't mean I'm in love with your dress. It means I'm in love with you. I may love your dress, but I'm not in love with it. The, the, the same way here, there is nothing that God has created as beautiful as it is. And my God, some of it is amazingly beautiful. But none of it is worthy of praise. None of it is worthy of worship. What's worthy of praise, what's worthy of worship is He who created it, not the creation. Amen? All right, let's look at verses 3 and 4. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind, who makes his angels, spirits, his ministers, a flame of fire. Now, Father God, as we know, is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the great I Am. He is the beginning and the end. By him alone, all that is created was created and as such he is master over it all he is lord over it all the universe in its entirety exists so as to serve the purposes and the divine will of god almighty the skies clouds serve as his chariots the blowing winds his form of transport the storms and their sounding blast are his messenger. The thunders rattle and the lightnings flash. These serve at his divine beck and call. What we view as chaos, as, as uncontrollable, as unknowable, is subject to his good created order. And the most destructive of forces are little more than his tools to bring mercy to bear. Also, quickly note how much of verse 3 and 4 point to the truth that angels, while not timeless, did exist before man. I say that because of verse 4 specifically really illustrates it, and it has intense chronological implications. Let's look at verse 4 real quick before we jump out of here. He, or I'm sorry, who makes his angels spirits, his ministers a flame of fire. So we see who comes first in that. And that's not just for no reason. The word of God was not just haphazardly thrown together. This is the culmination of specific authors joined with breath of God inspiration. That's what, that's what helps to comprise our canon, amen? And none of it is just happenstance or just because. All right, let's look at verse 7. 
At your rebuke, they fled. At the voice of your thunder, they hastened away. Rebuke here comes from the Greek, and it is the exact same word in its original form that is found throughout the Septuagint, but also in Matthew 8, 26, wherein Christ openly rebukes the sea, and in so doing, further reveals and vets his divinity as who else but the creator could exert such control or dis display such profound knowledge of the creation. Amen? All right, you guys, let's look now at verse, let's look at verse 13. Like I said, thank you guys so much for letting me share with you. He waters the hills from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. All right, so back in verse 10, actually, you know what? Let's jump back there. Let's reread verse 10 again. He sends the springs into the valleys. They flow among the hills. And now back to 13. He waters the hills from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. Talking about God's works. Amen. So, back in verse 10, our psalmist spoke of the earthly, or let's call them the terrestrial waters. Streams, springs, aquifers. Well, here in verse 13, the focus shifts to a different source of water, to the rain or the celestially sourced waters. And all of this also looks to the waters above the firmament. And let, talking about that, I want to jump back real quick. Let's look at Genesis 1 real quick. Because, I mean, you know, it's running parallel to Genesis 1. All of this is sourced so heavily off of Genesis 1. So let's look at Genesis chapter 1. Let's go ahead and read 6 through 8. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament, the firmament being a divider. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were under above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning were the second day. Okay, so let's talk about a couple different things. One, the heavens. What's going on there? Well, there's three different heavens. You have the heavens, which are directly above us, basically the, the area in between the ground and outer space. That is one of the heavens. That's the first heaven. The second heaven is from where our atmosphere ends into the outer space, what we would call outer space. That's the second heaven. Then you have the third heaven. The third heaven is where Paul says, I was caught up to the third heaven. Or in other words, the third heaven is the divine heaven. When we think of heaven and hell, that heaven is the third heaven. So when it's talking about the dividing the waters from the waters, it's talking about the water here on the ground, and then the waters in the sky are clouds. But then there's also talk of a water above the firmament, a heavenly source of water. And this, along with the deeps being cracked open, is how the flood of Noah was brought to bear. Now, let's look at verses 14 and 15. I hope all that made sense. If you guys have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man, that he may bring forth food from the earth and, and wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. So just as all the animals know the kindness of God is... Nowhere on more clear display than in his daily life-sustaining provisions of food and air and everything. Well, here, when it's talking about food, it's talking about grain, wheat, etc. Wine looks to the fruit, the grapes. Oil is pulled from the olives. This nutritious and life-sustaining triad is... 
a sort of mirrorism. It is representative of a whole year of agricultural production and harvest. And interestingly enough, the order here, the order here, let's look at that again, 14 and 15, causes the grass to grow, wine makes glad, oil to make his face shine, right? So, that order that they are presented in is, interestingly enough, the exact same order in which those things were harvested in. So, our psalmist presents them in an order that runs parallel to their sequence of harvest. I don't know why. I think that's extremely beautiful. Let's look at verse, let's look at verse 29. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath. They die and return to their dust. Recall that God is unchanging. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And in, a, in addition to that, we often talk about how God is omnipotent and omniscient. But sometimes we glaze over the third aspect of that, and that is that God is omnipresent. That said, however, God in his anger can pull back or, or withdraw his covenant blessings. And to the subject of that, the one experiencing this being pulled back, such a withdrawal like this would absolutely be experienced as a absence of the divine, even though in truth, God is always everywhere all at once. Amen? Let's look at verse 31, y'all. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. So our psalmist is calling upon God or, or just noticing that, you know, the, the works of God are so good that even God should glorify in them. There are many aspects to the glory of God, many of them a bit more abstract or even ephemeral. But here... The glory that is on display here, the glory that is being spoken of here, is tangible. The glory spoken of here looks to the glory, the wondrous acts of creation, real, physical acts that occurred. Amen? And so in that aspect, the glory spoken of here is very, very tangible. Amen? All right, let's look at verse 32. Basically, the last thing I have to share with you today, I'll be honest, we could have did a much longer video on this, but I try to keep stuff to where it's easily digestible, hopefully. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the hills and they smoke. All right, on our, on our own, our best, and we read about this yesterday, the best that we could have to offer on our own is filthy rags. And even nature is brought to naught by the Creator. Now, readers and contemporaries should understand hills here to be symbolic of that which is stable, that which is solid and firm. But even that, even that, this unmovable, unshakable, solid, firm, physical, natural thing, is brought to flame by the simple touch of Father God Almighty. Such is the power, such is the scope, such is the capability of He who not only created everything, but sustains everything. He who exists before there was existence. Amen. Hey, now, if you're not subscribed, please smash that subscribe button. I drop a new video like this four to six days a week. Try to stick to the upper end, but always meet the minimum end at the very least. I also have almost 700 videos in my library. I would love for you to check out, watch, enjoy, share. Uh, exploring almost 40 of the Bible's 66 books, chapter by chapter. Um, exploring a whole host of different topics with scriptural countdowns. I have Bible story videos. I have some videos exploring different um, hymnals and gospel songs. And if there's anything else that you're interested in, I would love to hear that. Um, let's see, hit the bell if you want notified every time I drop a new video. I want you to do me a favor and give this one a thumbs up if you liked it. 
And I would love it if you feel spirit led to or if you're just okay with it. I would love for you to share this video on any platforms humanly possible. Amen. Um, let's see. Like I said, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, video ideas, I want to hear them. Drop them in that comment section. That's what it's for. Also, if you have any prayer requests, be as vague or as specific as you feel comfortable with and let me know in the comments. Let us know in the comments. There is no more powerful thing than to take to God in prayer the our thoughts, our cares, our worries for others. Amen. Jesus Christ was a servant and he calls us to walk as he walked. Amen. Let's see. Um, if you have a witness or a testimony and if you're saved, you do. And if you're not, Please get there soon. Now is the time for salvation. The breath that is in you right now is the best breath that you could ever use to cry out on the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I think that's it. I love you guys so much. Father God loves you even more. Do me a favor. Go out there and let somebody that you see today know just how much Jesus loves them and that he has a plan for their life and that he wants them to come and live with him and all of us forever in the eternal home that we are headed towards. Amen. Hey guys, do me a favor and uh, meet me back here tomorrow for the next video. I love you all so much. God bless.